everyone. Um, good afternoon, good evening, um, and a good morning to anyone who is in all the time zones. I am excited to be here and have been enjoying the conference since morning. It has been such a great programming that, um, you know, have learned a lot from a lot of speakers. As Margot mentioned, I ha I am I work at ZS. I'm a lead principal here, managing our ecosystem and alliances uh, space. And in my role, I come across a lot of um, newer technologies as well as uh, companies bringing th those new technologies out to market. Um, and uh, one of my primary jobs is to see how those technologies can be brought out in a consolidated solution to our clients. Here at ZS, just very quickly, we are a software, uh, we are a consulting firm, and we help uh, most of healthcare industry and beyond healthcare um, in their business consulting, as well as their complex solutions around consulting and um, technology. I thought we could spend some time today in um, talking about what uh, we see in the space around uh, uh, with AI in healthcare and just walk you through a few things that we have learned um, as we go uh, and help our clients in taking, uh, you know, uh, optimizing AI in building AI applications for use within the healthcare and life sciences space. Um, so with that, um, wanted to um, just get um, started around uh, where, um, uh, why do we think that this is the right time for AI? Now, we've been talking about AI for quite some time, but um, why do we think that this is the right time and why, is, why are we at an inflection point? So there are a few things which are a confluence of things happening externally that are all coming together, which is forming like a right right situation for AI revolution in healthcare. One of them is exploding data volumes, right? We, we um, uh, from right from Fitbits and uh, Apple Watches all the way to uh, uh, medical devices that are inserted within our body, we are generating a huge amount of data. So there is a statistic that <clears throat> we are going to be crossing hundreds of zettabytes of data that we are collecting on human health on ourselves, right? And then that data is a extremely rich data that can be used uh, for creating productive applications. Uh, programmable biology, right? Cell and gene therapies that are coming to market is from, uh, from the need for programmable bio biology. And... <clears throat> Excuse me. And with ultra um, high dimensional molecular data, which is helping us create uh, extremely high precision medicine for human body. Um, productivity promise. Um, it is accelerating use of data and AI is giving us insights and showing early promise in efficiency. So Efficiency that comes at a higher cost initially always uh, will create to, uh, will lead to greater effectiveness through uh, better applications, better outcomes, better diagnosis and treatment. So if we look at where we are in current state of AI in healthcare, um, a healthcare ecosystem is re getting ready for what we call the fourth industrial revolution. And what do you mean by that? I'm sure you're you are familiar with that term, but the fourth industrial revolution is essentially an in interconnect, is heavy interconnectivity, um, uh, automation, machine learning, and real time data. So, all of these things kind of coming together and applications being built across um, uh, across these uh, healthcare ecosystem with these features is what the next revolution is going to be. Um, we are looking at um, digital caregiving and new understandings of what is health and what is care, which is going to pay for better outcomes in healthcare. Efficiency will also lead to, as I said, better healthcare prevention, as well as di diagnosis and um, treatment uh, for healthcare. So you see some stats here where we, we uh, in our work, we've seen 56% of life sciences say that they have the right um, management in place to introduce more AI into work. 
and three times more hospitals in the US uh, are going to be implementing um, AI uh, uh, as we conduct our research. So what are some of the AI use cases, right? When we talk about um, AI, uh, it's a big field. You can apply it to any aspect of uh, healthcare. But if you zone in, um, I'm just taking an example of um, the survey that we did with pharma uh, executives, with pharmaceutical company executives, and we asked them that in the next year, what are some of the areas that you're likely to be using AI? And you see that a lot of it is within clinical trials, with the drug discovery, with real world evidence. I mean, they always um, shoot up to the top because looking for new medications and looking for new molecules is something that is top of mind uh, for all of the pharma executives. But not lost upon us is all of the other pieces which around sales and marketing and manufacturing and supply chain right, getting um, all these few areas to the top is uh, something that is top of mind and linking these, most executives say that linking these areas to our strategy and making it scalable is what um, we, uh, we are looking to do in the coming years. So um, uh, furthermore, we asked the same set of executives, what are the areas that can benefit from AI? Right? And we talked about new drug candidates, real world evidence, um, faster clinical trials, but not lost is personalized customer experiences or customer insights, right? Oh, more and more, we've already seen within uh, areas of retail, financial services, we want more personalized care, uh, personalized uh, recommendations or personalized uh, um, uh, digital advertising. Uh, it is, uh, healthcare is not, not lost on that. More and more patients want personalized customer experiences, right? Everything from personalized medicine all the way to how I'm treated when I walk into an hospital is all personalized now, and a lot of this has to go back to all of the applications that are created with the data and AI uh, applications that can help with this personalization. So enabling this journey from data to impact depends on a few things done, uh, uh, done right as you move um, across the spectrum. Um, having data, um, uh, uh, having a rich data foundation, which then gets into building the knowledge layer and then helping out with um, developing applications for insights, which are very much connected into driving impact, which is which comes through business processes and programmatic approach. So the journey from data to impact is pretty well documented and in industry is on this journey of starting um, to deliver impact um, to the healthcare, um, healthcare stakeholders. Some, however, some typical stumbling blocks that we see within our research is there's six things that most companies uh, trip on. Some of them are good in some areas versus um, others, but here are some typical stumbling blocks that we see. Some, uh, it's organizational mindset. Um, some struggle around analytical sophistication. And what we mean is we're not used to uh, not knowing which business processes should we uh, be using um, AI for, or uh, what are the right use cases to bring uh, forward, which will drive the highest impact. We also see, of course, talent shortage across the board in terms of having right skills um, and having the um, right efficiency within those skills. Operating model stands out as another one, as well as, you know, as much, uh, as well as data. So very critical is to make sure that um, the data, frag uh, data is not fragmented and it's not hard to work with. So having that data foundation um, is a, a place where most companies also find themselves working hard on getting that together. 
In healthcare, the other piece to um, note is uh, the data privacy and security is another aspect that most companies are also worried about and hence kind of want to go a little slow before they jump on this bandwagon. Of course, technical infrastructure with technology changing so rapidly is another space where many companies um, are also um, trying to uh, scale up. Um, so the industry has go, made good progress in spite of all these stumbling blocks. And we've moved from being in the basic AI space to more foundational to advanced AI space within the last, I would say, two to three years, right? Where we need to be, uh, where the healthcare industry needs to be is more around transformational, which is where um, it is going to realize the true potential of uh, of AI applications. Um, people, let's talk a little bit about people. So it's not, it takes a village to build these applications, right? We heard a lot about data scientists, that we need a lot more data scientists, but it's not just data scientists that are needed. You need folks who can do experimentation and model development. So the domain experts and data scientists, and there is a handshake and collaboration that needs to happen between the data scientists and domain experts to make sure that you bring the best um, use cases to bear through these applications. Um, the other end of the spectrum, you need model development and lifecycle management folks who can scale up um, uh, the applications that are developed and actually um, the, uh, drive the impact that these applications are supposed to um, deliver. So um, it, uh, our research further, and in you know, it's interesting. I've been listening to some of the um, some of the talks earlier on the stage, and everyone has been saying uh, talking about diversity. In uh, our research points exactly to the same spot where we find that diverse teams build much better AI applications. So, um, and in the reason, there are some critical reasons for that, that AI learns from data generated by human actions and mimics our biases. So um, the more diverse the team is and the more um, integrated the team is with the kinds of applications that are built, um, the better applications come to market. Right, you need a diverse. Uh, you need teams with creative thinking. You need teams that are um, uh, that are built such that they avoid this bias in programming, and uh, uh, they are the teams that are diverse in terms of race, gender, um, age, economic conditions. All of these kind of start becoming more. Uh, start taking out biases and start building applications that are more creative. Um, so um, it's something that I heard said before. Uh, also, uh, we'll reiterate that the, uh, you know, our research points to and what we do here at CS is always build teams uh, for developing AI application that resemble the people who are going to adopt it. You cannot always do it one to one, but the more biases you can take out, um, the better applications that come into market. So here at ZS, we approach um, uh, AI um, with trust in mind, right? The big thing that uh, we are focused on is making sure that we build, tr uh, build trust in the AI um, applications that come out in market. Um, we do that by um, responsibility, and what I mean by responsibility is, um, you know, there are some problems that AI should not solve. And making sure that you're picking problems that the AI applications can benefit most of and not using, uh, and that there is no irresponsible management of data or algorithms that can instill bias, right? Competence, com innovations have to work. You are oh, dealing with um, human life. You are uh, these AI applications directly impact with if you are building them for healthcare, they directly impact human life. So your innovations have to work. The healthcare ecosystem will also need to come to terms with what defines as acceptable error of margin when you're uh, in, in within these innovations. And once they do, these innovations have to work. 
transparency, right? Being upfront about limitations of what digital and data um, in AI can do um, can help maintain this trust. So we are, we always look for um, transparency as we um, as we build our applications. Um, and that net, um, I wanted to leave you all with three takeaways that as uh, industry uh, starts harnessing the data that is available, uh, as industry starts becoming a more efficient and AI applications bring that efficiency, we are going to see better healthcare prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. So the more we can help people from becoming patients, which is where the prevention will play a role, um, it is going to um, a, a create a healthier society. And once you, uh, and if you are a patient, if AI can help you diagnose it early and treat it early, you're gonna have a much healthier outcome um, across the board. The fourth industrial revolution of digital data and AI is unleashing healthcare's new future. And this means that we are going to need a lot more skill sets, a diverse set of talent pool um, that is uh, ready to uh, build these applications as well as scale these applications uh, into um, the market. And last but not the least, for AI to be successful, we need to build diverse teams and create diverse solutions that look like us, feel like us, and are, are created by teams who, uh, for people who would be using them. So with that, thank you for having me. And it is wonderful to um, share some of the, the research that we have done uh, with um, the team here.